Hey guys, Chris Fiore here with Fiore's Fishing. We just got back from Grand Lake, Oklahoma, where we fished the TBF National Championship. I was actually able to take home the Mid-Atlantic Division. I won first place in that. I didn't win the overall National Championship Living the Dream Package, which was the goal, which would have been nice, but we were able to get the win for the Mid-Atlantic Division here, bring it back to Virginia, and also I qualified for the BFL All-American, which is going to be on Lake Hartwell April 28th through the 30th. And I just want to go over a couple of the techniques Basically, the only techniques I found that were working and obviously anyone else found that was working because if you were watching, everyone was throwing the Alabama rig. This was, ba this was the winning lure for everyone. Everyone caught their fish on this. I caught my fish on this. I didn't catch a single fish on this, though, in practice. You know, this is, a, this is the Young Flash Mob Jr. Um, I was throwing it with the 8th eight, ounce jig heads and the white kytex these are i believe like three eighths inch or something and pearl white you know in practice i had thrown multiple different sizes multiple different colors but like i said i didn't get bit on it in practice the fish never really told me what they wanted and i told one of my buddies i was like look first day of the tournament i'll probably catch my fish on an umbrella rig and i was right i mean i pulled up my spot the first day wind was blowing right everything was good conditions were perfect and I had been catching them on a spinnerbait, which I'll show you guys here in a minute. And I was throwing that and couldn't, I, I just couldn't get bit on it. I think I had a couple short strikes. It was weird. They were hitting funny. And so I was like, well, let me pick up an umbrella rig. I got a bunch of hooks. They're smaller baits. And literally like my third cast, pulling it, on, rolling it on the bottom real slow. I start bumping rock and it just loads up. Caught my first keeper. But the fish, they hadn't moved on me. My first day wasn't a good day. I had four pounds. I had two fish. I caught, I had five bites, but they were all shorts. You know, no, I never caught a short fish in practice. A lot of people were complaining. They were like, you know, I haven't caught any short fish all week. And first day of the tournament, of course, you know, everyone starts catching shorts. And, um, but I threw this. The second day as well, I was able to relocate my fish. The, can, the wind has shifted. It started blowing from the east, northeast. So I moved over to the opposite bank and I had a seven pound deficit on second day. And I woke up thinking, I'm gonna be driving home 17 hours back to Virginia, tail tucked between my legs, you know, just not a good feeling. but. You, you, I, I can't let that stuff get in my head. I just stayed focused and went out there and did what I needed to do. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I've been catching them. I haven't caught small fish. And the wind was blowing the opposite direction and then something told me, hey, you know, you've been fishing the conditions. Don't try to fish the same spot. I went to the opposite bank and I basically caught all my weight there on that bank because it was a 50 yard stretch. And the key to the bank was, it was just a natural bank, but the location. It was first 75, 100 yard stretch coming into a big main creek, steeper bank, steep, deeper water, creek channel pushed up against it, typical you know textbook situation. And the wind was blowing, pushing in right on it. And literally in my first 10 minutes, I caught three of my biggest fish on this. And I looked and I ran around the lake looking for anything similar and I, I'm sort of gra looking at my graph looking at my chart trying to find banks that are going to be getting hit by the wind got the same you know first couple you know first couple hundred yards into a big main creek and there wasn't a lot not not with that wind um, I found other banks like in the inside the creeks and stuff like that and I just never I never could get bit I wasn't marking fish the only place I could mark find and mark fish was on this spot and I ran some points, was able to catch a couple, I was able to catch one more fish on a point, which was, which gave me four fish. But at the end of the day, basically the end of the day, every day, I would fish the stretch of docks coming back in Wolf Creek. Um, That's where we launch out of. There's a stretch of docks there. And it's just, I mean, it looks great. I mean, it's chunk rock, brush piles. These guys there, they fish. Every dock's got a brush pile out in front of it. But what I was doing is going up in between the docks, and I was throwing a, not that one. 
that's the other money lure. But I was throwing a one ounce. This is a Honey Creek Outdoors. They make their own spinner baits. It's a tackle shop down there. It's white and chartreuse. I was throwing with a rage swimmer on the back. I'd bite the tip off, super glue. But the key was the size six. You can see it's even like bent it up right there. <laughs> but size six Colorado blade, get in that thump with that longer wire on the spinner bait. But the key was having the heavy spinner bait so I could reel it really slow right on the bottom and bouncing on the rocks because i mean it was muddy water up there the strike zone is so small literally there was a brush pile this like this big i cast on the right side of it nothing and then i cast on the left side of it and i catch my four pounder the last day also caught a limit fish on the second day and called a fish on the second day which gave me the 15 pound bag and you know the first day i caught one keeper on the way back as well so it was the key was just making multiple casts i mean it was short 10 foot pitches you know just casting it as many targets as i can and slow rolling it out just right on the bottom just and then all of a sudden it would just get heavy and load up like you got hung on a rock and then you'd feel it take off and that that was the key you know a lot of people are saying they weren't getting bit but they were all throwing they were all throwing just regular, you know, double bladed spinner baits, and the, the really the key was just having that Colorado blade and just getting that thump. I mean, that was that is what I believe allowed me to get those bites, and the fact that I was making multiple, multiple casts, even sometimes casting the same spot two to three, sometimes four times. I'd fish to the left, then back to the right again, back to the left. And then when you had to, and it wasn't every dock, you had to be specific. You, you know, I'm always looking, I was looking five docks down the way and I would just look at the bank and look for something that was different, whether it was a tree growing or if there was a brush pile that or a stick I could see sticking up. And so I would come out and if the dock next to me didn't have anything in the middle or anything, I would go past it and go into the next one. And so it was, I mean, it was all about being efficient and saving time. During practice, this was the spinner bait I was catching them on. I was throwing a double willow leaf. This is gold and a silver blade. Same thing, one ounce, same setup, same rod and reel. I'm throwing an IMX, seven foot one, medium heavy action, you know, fast tip. And I'm throwing on an Abu Garcia Revo. It's a it's an eight to one gear ratio. It's a fast gear ratio. I was reeling really slow, trust me. But when you got bit, it was such close cor corner, close quarter combat that you i mean why cables i mean there was just trash everywhere i mean huge rock huge wood you know thousands of cables it's grand lake and so i was able to wrench them out and give them to the boat quick never even used a net just threw it just just boat flipped them but that was the technique that was what helped me fill out limits catch my limit fish um i caught my seven pounder on that in practice but again in the tournament only spinner bit I did get a bite on was the Colorado blade. But if you like this video, give me a like, give me a follow. Um, look for me at the BFL All American. I will be out there April 28th through the 30th. Also, I'll be out there for practice. So I'll be out there maybe two weekends in a row before the cutoff period. I'm excited about it. I just came from there from a Toyota Series event, and you know I'm. I was starting to figure it out on the last day, and so I'm excited. I'm excited to get back. So once again, if you like this video, give it a like, please. If you if you don't like it, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what I could change. You know, I'm always open to any any type of you know criticism. I'd like to be able to have videos out there that people are gonna watch. If they want me to get more specific in how I was fishing things, they want the video to be shorter. Um, I try to fit a lot into one because I don't want to make multiple different videos about different lures, but I can. But once again, give me a like, give me a follow at Fiori's Fishing, and thank you guys. Look for me.